Hello YouTube, Matthew here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit more about iOS Forensics. And in this video I'm going to be discussing how to find various apps inside the application or the places where you find those apps in the iOS file system. As well, I'll talk a little bit about Safari in there too. So without further ado, let's get into this and roll the intro. So now we're back into the image. I want to start doing here is we can go into this install D again. We can go into this install D and we can see that. Actually, if we collapse that like this, we can see that install D has something like a library right here. Now, we'll also notice that here, if we open the mobile directory, which has a lot of the most interesting stuff that we can find on an iOS image, we'll see that all of this structure right here is outlined in the same sort of way. Now, logs is also done pretty similarly. If we go into containers, we also see that it's done in such a similar way to other things. Now, database or this DB directory here has a lot of other stuff. That should be about, that should just be exclusively databases storing information about a whole lot of stuff about the system, the system that we have here. And then we can see also that there's unzipped folders in this image or zipped folders, compressed folders, that there's compressed folders in this image and these compressed images will also, I mean, these compressed folders will also contain data. Data that's interesting data. So now let me expand this library out again. So we can see that this library directory here is pretty simple to track through and find things. So we'd have caches here in this caches folder if there needs to be things stored about install staging. So I'm assuming that if this, if there were an update ready for staging, it would be cached here until the system is ready to install it. Now, mobile installation logs will give us logs about the version information. Now, if we open this in our text edit thing, we can see that, I'm pretty sure that just looking through this on my first go, I'm sure that it's when things are updated and okay. So when things are updated and when new apps are installed, now this really mobile installation folder within the install D shows a lot of stuff about our system version and our disk image info. So let me open my plist editor here. And I will throw one of these in here. I would, I will throw last build info .plist in here. And so what we can find here is
I'll actually make this a little bit bigger for you, if I can. Okay, I can't make this any bigger, but one thing that we can find here is we can find our version of our version of the iPhone LS within a preference list file. Like what I've mentioned in past videos of looking through plist editors on Windows. So now we have the same xplist plist editor on our Mac that we did on our Windows. But we can find in this folder the last build info, which shows our last build info. Okay, I will discard the changes to that. Then we also have migration info. Let me throw that in there. Okay, it shows some of our same data that we put on the last one. Now let's not take too much time with this, but... The role user migration plist shows different data. The last migration time. Now this one here shows whether it shows what apps are installed from a backup. And yeah, that's that it has a value of possibly zero, one or two. Backed up state. Okay. So I can move on really quickly. So now in our preferences folder, this would usually contain only plists if we were looking at other thing, other places. So in our directory, com.apple.mobile.installation.plist, that file is definitely a plist. And it will contain preferences about things. So now if we go back down to mobile, we can find general application data either in this applications folder, which in my case for this 15 iOS 15 image, it doesn't have anything in there. But we can also find our app data in mobile containers, data, application, and any of these folders that are within it. And we'll be able to see that these all have big long hexadecimal number strings and these are called our unique you or global unique identifi identifiers or GUIDs. And what these GUIDs do is identify to the system what the app is rather than just by name. And these get confusing sometimes because if we are forensic investigators looking at the same phone and if we update the phone or turn the phone off or do anything like that, our GOIDs will perhaps change. Because I know on a test phone that I own, that test phone has been updated by accident. And I had to re jailbreak it to take another image of it. And when I took the other image of it or the newest image of it, when I compared the GOIDs of the old one to the new one, they were different. So now I would, so now I'm led to believe that things are very different once we turn the phone off or update it or do both. Now for all these apps, there may be some apps here that we are 
that are very that have data that's very useful to us but at the moment since i just want to make this video quickly to tell you what things may look like i won't do any specific app however what i will do is i will go into this app right here so in general applications will have this structure right here where we find a documents directory a library directory with a bunch of stuff in it a system data directory which may or may not have anything and a temporary directory which is essentially just a cache for temporary files that the app may need to run but that can delete at any point in time. Now the library is often what contains the most interesting of data. So it can it can contain it can contain caches of things which are data that it uses a lot. Like in this case this telephony data will contain thumbnails in the form of PNGs. So this is most likely from our dialer app or some kind of dialer app from an app but most likely our dialer app from the phone of this iPhone image. And we can see that this shows all the keys of our T9 keyboard, which is very cool. Now to preferences, this folder will be saving playlists. I mean, preference list files. And this folder saved application data and this will save scenarios. Yeah, actually after that, let me go into preference plist. Let me look for plist files and other ones really quickly for you guys. Okay, in this one, web sheets, plist. Okay, so this shows markers to WebKit data. So this might be something related to Safari. Okay, actually, give me a second. I'll be right back, and I will I will share with you guys stuff about the Safari app. Okay, I'm back. I found a little bit. I found the folder containing Safari. So if we go back down to the library, we can find a lot of the cool stuff for the native apps on our iPhone operating system. And now with this being said, we'll go through some of these later on in our series. But for now, what I want us to focus on is I want us to focus on our, not SMS, but Safari was about to tap SMS. So let me drop this guy. And actually let me put in put in this one here. 
So this is yet again some data that we can find about our about a browser. So we can show the bookmarks. So this database that shows bookmarks will will show us all the bookmarks to Safari and we'll see that we have a reading list, we have the track phone, we have an iPhone user guide, and we have links to all of these pages too, which is very cool. And folder ancestors shows keys, generations, SQL sequence. Okay, so bookmarks and bookmark title words are the most important parts of this one. And we have a browser state database or browser state database and a history database. And this browser state database will show us the amount of windows that we have, the, the windows and tab sessions that we have. And it just shows it by UUID, but this doesn't show anything in particular that that is of note to us. And our history database will show us the history for our safari. History crawline, history events, there are no history events. But there are history items to us. And we could see that this could be very helpful if we want to find a certain activity that someone did on the browser. History items to tags. It just shows tags, history tags. And this will be very nice for us, Jared Kareem. But this will be very nice for us if we want to quickly think about things like data breaches, computer security, or whoever this Jaweed Kahim guy is. Okay, now I think this is a good point to leave you guys. And at this point, what I want you guys to do f at this point from now on, after you do this video, or after seeing this video, I want you to... Okay, there's an image that I have linked in the description, and if you made it this far in the video, I want you to download that. And just take a look through some of the apps. You don't have to do much with when you look through the apps, but look through the apps in all of the locations that I've shown and just see what's on it and see what you can find about it. And just get the reps in. And getting the reps in will really help you memorize how certain apps are laid out and also how to find things within apps. Now, thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. And I really do hope also that you're learning something by watching these videos and doing the image work after. Now, catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day. And keep on enjoying learning forensics. Mad out.